20 years ago, uh, a young man terrorized Central Ohio, uh, driving around uh, primarily 270 initially, uh, firing indiscriminately uh, at passing cars, at school buses, at uh, schools and so forth. And so this became the highway shooter case in Central Ohio. I was a corporal in our detective bureau when a horrific incident happened on 270 and a woman lost her life. Initially, when uh, Gail Nisley was, was killed on 270, um, as the corporal over uh, crimes against persons uh, responded out to the scene with uh, uh, the detectives and uh, started uh, canvassing the area, looking for evidence, trying to figure out how uh, the stray bullet on 270 um, hit a car and, and killed a woman. The, the day that we started, started piecing this together, uh, Chief Deputy Steve Martin at the time had uh, called myself and a few other people into his office, and he was on a mission. He had, had, you know, we had realized that this was a serial shooter. We were putting together a task force, and so uh, Steve Martin was, you know, he was very intentional, and he was giving us orders and, and, and sort of uh, action items moving forward, and he mentioned he wanted an EOC uh, set up. Um, obviously looked at me uh, to do so. At the time, this is 20 years ago, and so being a young corporal who was in charge of crimes against persons, I had no prior experience with operating an emergency operations center. Quite frankly, I didn't even know what an EOC uh, meant um, until I walked out of his office, but really quickly I, I had to figure that out. Um, and with the help of a number of, of folks from our office and other offices, the FBI was a major contributor to that, we were able to set up that, that information hub uh, that would serve as the place that this investigation would be the, the heartbeat of, of that. We got all sorts of tips, and from that EOC, uh, those tips would be vetted. They would be assigned out to investigators. Investigators would go into the field and look into these tips, and I believe it was tip uh, 5,444 that came in, and that tip uh, led us to filing warrants for Charles McCoy, um, and so the manhunt was on. Um, information went out across the country. Tips continued to pour in, and someone spotted him in, in Las Vegas. You know, that tip that led to, to Charles McCoy's arrest in, in Vegas, um, you know, the work didn't stop there. Um, there was a series of, of search warrants, uh, obviously interviews, and connecting him to the crime back here in central Ohio. Once that happened, obviously he was charged. He was indicted uh, on the death of Gail Nisley and these series of shootings that, uh, that gripped Central Ohio. Um, ultimately, that led to uh, a couple of trials, and Charles McCoy ended up pleading guilty uh, and was sentenced to uh, 27 years in prison. Living in that time and how Central Ohio uh, really was scared. Uh, everywhere I went when I wasn't investigating, participating in the investigation, everywhere I went, Friends, family, relatives uh, would, would ask me, should I change my route of travel? Should I change my behavior? They were concerned that they might be next. And as the folks investigating it, there was an urgency in this office that we were trying to capture this killer before we did have another uh, victim out there. Um, you know, it was important that we come together and, and work to bring this case to, to resolution. Charles McCoy was captured. Um, after uh, painstaking uh, trials, uh, but ultimately pled guilty and he's where he belongs and that's behind bars.